in the last episode of Awkward Conversations. The first six weeks on campus are typically the most at-risk time for college students. Sometimes that can lead students to try to wander to look for parties or look for social environments. I know when I went in as a freshman, it was like the greatest moment in the world when an upperclassman talked to you. Onset of substance use can also put them at risk for kind of being derailed from their path if college is the path that they're looking for. So talking about campus tours and things like that, now what are the some of the things that, you know, when parents and and their their older kids, young adults are looking at schools, what are some of the really important questions that they should ask? Sure, I would say, um, you know, one thing from the, from the beginning is choosing a college or university is a family decision. As much as it often comes down to finances, it comes down to location and the school reputation. Looking at the academics, you look at the athletic facilities, you look at the housing off offerings, um, but you also want to take a look at the campus culture and, and the local area. Um, what is it like? What is the area where the university or college is located? Um, are there lots of bars promoting drink specials? Are there cannabis dispensaries on every corner saying, you know, welcome college students or welcome back, that sort of thing? Are buckets of beer advertised? That can tell you a little bit about the climate of an institution and its local area that you may not get on a tour. Um, I always like to say, inquire about the campus and alcohol, alcohol and drug policies. It should be easy to find in one or two clicks on the website. Ask the questions during the tour. Ask the administrators how they, they uphold underage drinking and, and drug prevention. What resources are available? Ask about um, housing. Do they have substance-free floors? Is there recovery housing? And more importantly, when you ask the question, how do they act? Are they like, oh, yeah, we have that, but not too many people like that. Or, oh, all of our halls are substance free. If you get kind of a dismissive or a defensive or kind of a <laughs> silly parent asking this question, that can tell you a little bit maybe about the social norms there or in terms of what the students may be expecting when they arrive. Um, I would also ask about Greek life. Is there, is there a Greek life presence? How important is that for the social environment? Take a drive off campus, look at the chapter houses, how well managed do they appear? Same thing, if it says drop your underage, you know, drop your freshman girls here, that's gonna tell you something <laughs> that you wanna avoid. Yeah, I'm glad Sally mentioned all of those because uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that you know, we frame all of this under awkward conversations, but there are natural opportunities to have the conversations. And sometimes I think the more awkward conversations happen when you're not prepared to have the conversation, right? And I think, you know, as parents, other caregivers, and it really isn't just the parents. We know that the grandparents are involved. We know that brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, you know, are all influencers, uh, you know, on a, a child uh, and, and, and emerging adults, uh, those who are going off to college. So, you know, the, the tour that you're getting on campus, you know, what are they looking to do? They're selling you a product. And that's not to minimize the experience, but, you know, they are trying to entice you to tell you all the good things about their campus, which they should be doing. But your tour guide is likely not going to know all of the ins and outs of the examples that, like, for example, what Sally just talked about. So try to get an appointment with most likely the student affairs office. That's who you want to talk to because that's a lot of times where the prevention uh, activities and services fall under. And if you can get even just that 30 minute conversation, not even as high as the VP for student affairs, but an associate or someone else, and just talk to them exactly what Sally talked about, you will come in away from that so much more informed for better or for worse um, about, you know, again, it comes back to this culture issue. Uh, so I'm glad that Sally, you know, mentioned all those specific examples on a campus. Now, you know, in addition to obviously uh, drug prevention and things like that, what are some other important uh, statistics and, and culture things to look at when looking at schools? One thing that is required for all campuses is the Cleary Report, which is the Campus Security Act, um, the U.S. Department of Education. Um, every year, campuses must report their, their crimes publicly. So that would include lo liquor law violations, um, 
any drug violations and things like that, that can give you sort of a couple indications. One, if it's a large campus or one with a fully uh, full police department, there may be more enforcement and more reporting that's happening. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad indicator, but it can also tell you sort of what the trends are. It also will tell you um, how things, uh, what resources are available. So that is publicly available. Um, all campuses have that. And that is something to delve into as well. Okay, great. Yeah, those are also really important things to look at when choosing a school. Seychelles, what were some of the things that, uh, as an incoming student, that you were looking at that were important to you? And what were some of the questions that you had about campus life and culture and things like that? Yeah, when when I was getting into school, it started to become really popular for YouTube vlogs of students to document like what their rooms look like, what the school looks like. And that is kind of your your little glimpse into an actual student's life on, on camera versus talking to someone um, in a higher up office. You can see the actual student living their life and what they're doing, what their, especially, especially like what their housing situation looks like. You want to see what the dorm looks like, what they're, if they're in Greek life, see what they're doing as far as like how, what they're running on campus. And then also what resource centers are available on the campus. So whether it's a racial identity or sexual orientation or like deaf studies, things like that. So what specific, what resource center would be specific to my identity is a big thing because when you have questions like the uh, drug prevention or health, mental health needs, you can go, you might feel more comfortable to go to your specific resource center, especially when you're first coming in. That is a big thing. And what is around the school I know plays a huge part. So, you know, grocery stores or shopping centers or leisure activities, like what can I do off campus and what is also what is happening on campus? And I think social media has been a good way to be able to, to see that. So you can see pictures. I remember I was like looking through Instagram accounts of people and all the different clubs and just getting to see it physically happening was a big thing. That's re that's actually really smart. And, you know, because I'm 40, I was like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't have even thought to have done that. But of course, like, you know, young people are like, well, let me see what an actual experience is like and go to, you know, different vlogs and things like that. So that's actually a really great suggestion uh, and a really great great window into what's actually going on on campus and with students that, you know, maybe the student tour won't show you or the office won't show you. Now, Amy, I also wanted to ask, um, you know, I know for myself, my own experience in college, um, those first six weeks were a nightmare. <laughs> uh, I got sober, you know, one of the first times I got I got sober and really started trying to figure out my relationship with drugs and alcohol was at 18 years old and in college. Um, and you know, one of the things that I realized I hadn't asked a lot of questions about was what was the mental health care like on campus? What were some of the resources, drug and alcohol programs, things like that? Are there questions, Amy, that that um, parents and, and young people can ask um, for if their students are in recovery? Um, you know, I know Sally mentioned recovery houses, substance free floors, things like that. What are some of the things that you have found um, important to ask about maybe students that are in recovery? Yeah, I think along with what Seychelles was kind of mentioning around resource like centers on campus, counseling centers are a huge aspect of, of college life. And in recent years, you know, with the mental health kind of crisis expanding it, you know, as much as it has, unfortunately, I think colleges have really bolstered the support that they offer on campus, which is a wonderful thing. And so on those tours, on those YouTube vlogs, which actually it's a, a hot tip, Seychelles, <laughs> that I had not uh, thought of before, um, you know, are people talking about those things? Can you ask those questions? If that's not featured on the tour, could you also kind of seek that out and kind of go and look and see the center, you know, while you're kind of there and visiting? Uh, we have many families who actually talk about that, you know, in, in their work with us um, at Children's Hospital. So um, like Dr. Lenowski had mentioned, you know, the substance-free living um, is a common occurrence on a lot of campuses. So whether that's an entire separate building, whether that's a floor, um, and, and even beyond that, sometimes there are things like quiet living or just, you know, living and learning communities that might kind of entice uh, a student. 
Um, and I also think, as was mentioned previous, previously too, resident assistants and resident directors are a huge component of, of mental health care on, on uh, campuses. And so, you know, and especially if you're living on campus. And so, you know, knowing that you have that resource at your disposal right down the hall or, you know, kind of, you know, right in the, in the next floor um, and utilizing that, I think, is a really important um way to get support on campuses and especially in those beginning, beginning weeks. Absolutely. The beginning is the, you know, that transition into college life is really difficult. I know I struggled immensely. Um, my, my first semester of college, uh, was a really rough time of my life. And, uh, I know one of the things for me that I was most terrified to do was to call my parents and feel like I had quote unquote failed launching into college life because I was struggling with addiction or I was, you know, struggling with my alcoholism. My grades were terrible. I didn't know, you know, I ran into a lot of problems. And I think, um, you know, both for parents and young adults, what you have to, what, the, the most important thing to realize is, is you can always call your parents. Your parents will always want to hear from you or someone trusted in your life. If you are struggling, reach out, whether it looks like someone on campus, whether it looks like calling your parents. Um, you know, I think about it now. Um, gosh, I wish I would have called my parents so much sooner into some of my struggles uh, when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old, um, because I know that they just wanted the, what was best for me. And I wish I would have used some of those campus resources or at least known that they were there um, ahead of time instead of, you know, kind of trying to scramble around um, and, and find out after it was too late and after I was trying to piece my life back together. Um, so I think, you know, just something that I want to stress as a parent to to other parents also is, you know, make sure that your kids know they can always call if they're 20 years old and they're struck, like call. It's OK. Open the door. Say I'm struggling figure it out. And, and that goes back to, I think, you know, what we've all been talking about too, is that relationships, relationships, relationships are the key to a successful send off of your young adult into college life, independent life, all of that. You know, these relationships start getting built, like Amy was talking about in middle school, eighth, ninth, 10th grade, um, and they continue on. And so, um, you know, I, I just know that that leaving that line of communication open is just it's the one thing that we always go back to. It's why my shirt says listen on it. You know, one of the most important parents uh, things that parents need to do is listen. Really, we I, I know we get so caught up in wanting to give this great advice and tell our kids how it should be done. Um, and I think sometimes the, the biggest thing that we need to do as parents is just listen. Saving lives means staying informed. Knowing the dangers of using counterfeit prescription pills can help those you care about and keep our community safe. As a parent, educator, neighbor, or friend, we all play a role in building safe and healthy futures for ourselves and our loved ones. Do your part. Take the first step today. Visit GetSmartAboutDrugs.com to access education, prevention, and treatment resources. Counterfeit prescription pills laced with fentanyl are deadly. Be their protector. Be informed. Visit GetSmartAboutDrugs.com. So, you know, Rich, we were talking about um, having these conversations and continuing these conversations. You know, the, the job of a parent is never done. <laughs> no, it, it's not. And, you know, I'm glad Amy brought it up earlier. It's never too early to start the conversation with your kids about, you know, the issues around drugs. And there is no end point. It's never too late either. Um, and so, you know, and we know college students are under a tremendous amount of stress. Um, and, you know, it may not be the parent that they want to talk to, you know, if they are struggling. And, you know, thank you again for sharing your personal story about this, because that really, I think, opens it up for a lot of individuals. So it might be the RA, it might be a professor, a faculty member, a staff member, you know, somebody that they work with. Um, so, you know, you know, it's really important to know that they do have somebody to turn to, um, you know. I know, and Sally knows, you know, on a campus, our number one message is going to be to not use, um, you know, if you're underage and, you know, for alcohol and, you know, federally, marijuana is an illegal substance. But we know some states have, you know, passed laws around personal use. But even in those states, it's illegal if you're under the age of 21. Our message is still going to be non-use if you're underage. But we also are not naive enough to not know 
that there are students who are going to use regardless. And campuses around the country, including at UMass Amherst, have tremendous services in place for those students who choose to ignore the law. And they have to have those services in place and those support networks. So, you know, a real shout out to the prevention professionals around the country who are doing this really hard work. Yeah, I know for me, you know, like I said, uh, because I struggled with addiction and all of this while I was on campus, um, you know, I, I struggled in the dorms. I str- all of that it was a really, really hard. It was one of the hardest times of my life in struggling with, with substance abuse. And I am so grateful for the programs that were on campus, even if, you know, thinking back to them now, I didn't use them maybe as effectively as I should have. Um, they opened my eyes. They were, there were, I had incredible professors who talked to me, who talked me through stuff, who supported me. You know, there, there are people on campus and at home who are, you know, joining together. And Amy, um, we were talking also about, um, you know, finding uh, recovery, tw- whether it's 12-step, AA, NA, different um, 12-step recovery programs um, in the area for college students? Yeah, some may even be offered on campus um, and some may be, you know, in the community surrounding the campus. Um, and also now we live in a much more virtual world. And so there's opportunities to connect, you know, across you know, across states and across, you know, uh, the country. Um, so, you know, being able to look into those resources, you know, in preparation of getting to, to campus, especially for somebody who already knows that substance use is a concern for them, um, I think is a great kind of, you know, safety plan almost to put in place. One of the things that's also really important to be uh, aware of are some of the, you know, some of the signs uh, of use. Um, and you know, Sally, maybe you can speak to some of those um, on campus, what you see as, you know, potential warning signs. Sure. I, you know, I think some of the signs that we might see are someone uh, stops going to class or falling behind in their academics, um, requesting extensions on assignments. Um, changing their friend group or losing interest in things that they used to be passionate about. So whether it's a sport or a club or whatever that may be, they're just not as into it because they have a new habit or a new hobby or an addiction that's developing. So they're replacing the time that they used to spend on other things with using um, or or trying to find or recovering from the use of of alcohol or drugs. So any change like that, you know, change in hygiene, sleep, and obviously when you come to college, your sleep patterns may change because you may have, you know, late morning classes and you're up all night playing video games. That's not what I'm talking about, but changes like that. I often say, you know, for, for families, embracing technology is really a great way to stay in touch with your, with your student in terms of, you know, FaceTime. Everybody FaceTimes for everything. So instead of just a phone call, FaceTime when they're in their room and say, hey, show me your room. Let me see your room. What's your room look like? And if it's a mess and you see alcohol bottles or you see them hiding things from you, that may say something, right, in terms of what the habits are. Um, You can get a look at how how do they look? Do they look tired? Do they look you know, sort of uh, messy, sloppy, that kind of thing. Also see their friends, you know, call them or FaceTime at a time that's unexpected when they may be with their friends and say, hey, let me say hi to Jody. I haven't seen Jody in a while. Um, Those sorts of things go a long way because with technology, we can see each other in real time. Um, And sometimes that that can make a difference. I think some of the other signs um, might be if they're asking for money, Really, when you go away to school, you shouldn't need a lot of cash or a lot of money um, because, you know, your tuition is paid for. You have a meal plan. You probably have a job. Your books will be paid for. So if they're asking for money for things, that could maybe tell you that they're purchasing. Well, I just want to thank you all for joining us on such a great conversation today. Um, Rich Lucy, thank you so much. Dr. Sally Lenowski, uh, Amy McCarthy, Seychellis, thank you so much. We've got some great perspectives here. And um, I think it all comes down to communication, communication, and communication. Coming up on the next episode of Awkward Conversations. Hi, I'm Claire Kramer, and welcome to today's episode of Awkward Conversations. Today, we are talking about fake prescription pills that are laced with fentanyl, and these pills are deadly. We're going to talk all about that and the fact that one pill can kill. My husband and I are both federal law enforcement officers, and 
Even though we have the training as a mother, I'm scared to death for my kids and their friends. DEA alone, not, not counting our other law enforcement partners, in 2021 seized enough fake pills to kill every American. They absolutely do look like uh, real pills. And one pill can kill is not just a marketing tagline or a slogan. It is a fact and it is the reality we live in. Make sure to check out GetSmartAboutDrugs.com. Parents, caregivers, you can find so many resources of great information there about how to talk to your kids and make these conversations a little less awkward. A huge thank you to the Elks DAP, which is the largest all volunteer nationwide drug awareness program. And also a huge thanks to the DEA for their outreach program and for making this possible. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Awkward Conversation series are solely those of the individuals, speakers, commentators, experts, and or hosts involved, and do not necessarily reflect nor represent those of the production, associates, or broadcaster, or any of its employees. Production is not responsible and does not verify for accuracy any of the information contained in the series available for viewing. The primary purpose of this series is to educate and inform. This series does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. This series is available for private, non-commercial, commercial use only. The production, broadcaster, or its channel cannot be held accountable for all or any views expressed during this program.